Well, hi guys, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond. And in today's video, we're back on the driveway again, doing some more work on the van. And I'm gonna to talk to you all about how we're gonna power everything in this crafter conversion. So all the electrics, um, all the different devices that will be used, and just gonna show you where I'm gonna install them as well. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing to talk about is this board here. This is what I was doing yesterday, cutting out uh, this board, but behind that is actually where all the cables come through. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there's a hole there, well, a couple of holes, which is where the cables from the cavities in the wall and everything like that, they all come back to this point and pop through the, the hole there. That, that back board there is similar to what, well, it's the same board that put on here. I've just painted this one. Um, it's just a bit of, I think it's six mil ply and uh, yeah, just cut out to basically hold back the vapor barrier, the insulation, everything like that. That's battened to the wall. And the difference being is this one is not painted and it, it's gonna be completely hidden. So I wasn't worried about how that one looked. So that initial board at the back there is just to hold everything back and just gives a guide for the cables to come through. And then on top of that, is this phenolic board now don't worry i'd never heard of phenolic either but what it is is it's a um it's like a it's a laminate board but with a sort of thermo setting plastic over the top of it the important thing is the fact that it is heat proof you know it's flame proof so you can't if if the electrics get hot on top of that board it's not going to cause issues so that's that's what that is there for now obviously you can see it is not screwed back to the side yet but it has been all scribed and everything, so it does sit nice and flush. It's really bright out here today, but it does sit nice and flush against the uh, wall. And it's also cut out for bits like here. It's also gonna be mounted to, um, this is where the aluminium bed frame comes along to. Um, but underneath that, I'm gonna actually mount a bit of timber that this will attach to. It just saves me drilling into the aluminium um, and it will just, be nice and secure against that and then at the bottom there is another batten that goes along the the bottom there and it'll attach onto there but what I need to do now is I need to work out exactly where all the different electrical devices are going to go and we do have all those uh, and I'm going to show you where everything is going to go and also just what everything does as well but first thing I need to do is get this board back out of the van and laid on a table so we can start laying devices on and uh, yeah, talk about them. It's actually really tricky to get this board in and out because um, just with the length, obviously the length of the bed is the same length as the top of this. I've cut it to end at the end of the bed. But what that means is around the wheel arch, it gets so thin here. And you can see I have already caught it a little bit. It doesn't matter too much if this breaks off, but yeah, I don't really, it would just be nice if it didn't. So I'm just so cautious getting that in and out. But anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to give this a quick wipe because it's full of dust.
Right, I know what you're thinking. How on earth do you know what you need to power everything inside the van? And I must admit, it's sort of hours and hours, night after night of research, going online and checking what other people have done, watching tons and tons of YouTube videos and just trying to pick stuff up. But it's an absolute minefield. There's so many different, even just this box here, there's so many different versions of that. So what um, what I actually ended up doing was I knew roughly what I wanted, but then I got in touch with uh, Roma. Roma make uh, lithium batteries. We have ordered a battery, but it's not with us yet. We're just waiting for that. It's on back order at the minute. But what they also offer is a video call confrontation. Uh, confrontation. But what they also offer is a video call consultation. So you speak to, well, I spoke to Steve from Roma, who is unbelievably knowledgeable, knows absolutely everything there is to know about the electrics inside of a, a camper van. You sit down, you talk about what you need out of your van, uh, what are gonna be the big appliances that are gonna, you want to power in your van, whether you wanna power that off grid or not, all that kind of stuff all sorts of different things that he asks and things that you don't necessarily think of as well when you're when you're building a van and then he uh, takes down your budget uh, so obviously all this stuff is budget dependent we've actually gone for although it's Victron stuff which is quite expensive stuff we've actually gone for a fairly reasonable setup it's not that expensive the battery is quite expensive but there isn't a huge amount of stuff here I'll talk more about that later on but um, we went for a fairly conservative setup. But the, but the beauty of all of this is once you finish your consultation, you wait a few days and then via email, Steve from Roma sends you a full schematic, which includes uh, all the devices that you've discussed and what you want to put in, and also all the cable sizing that is required to power all those things, which is, you know, that's priceless. It is really, really useful. You can spend ages obviously working out what all the cable sizes should be by looking at how many watts everything draws and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, he knows what he's doing. It's just so much easier just to get him to draw up a schematic for us. And yeah, as you can see on the screen now that the schematic is really, really detailed, really, really informative, shows tons and tons of stuff. And then when you click on each and every little device, it brings up the manual for that device as well. Uh, it's got loads of little tips on the side. It's, it's brilliant. It's so, so useful. So what I've done is I've printed that off uh, and I'm now going to put it alongside here and work out sort of where all the cable routes will go. Obviously, you could just chuck it all on, but it depends on where the cables are going to go and just what is going to be the neatest installation. Right, in fact, before we actually work out where everything is definitely going to go, I just want to talk about what each individual item does. You can see I put my schematic down, which is just... It's so detailed, it's brilliant. So I've just taped that onto here. Right, let's look at the first item. So this is the Lynx Power In. This is essentially just a buzz bar. So in layman's terms, most stuff, all this stuff here, all connects into this uh, as a main sort of central point to put everything. It's just basically connections. That's all it is. All, all the cables connect into here. The bit at the top, that is the the brains behind the it's called a Serbo GX it's the brains behind the monitoring system so we will have a touch screen uh, mounted somewhere else all these items here will talk to this and then that will display the information on the touch screen somewhere else inside the van below that we've got the solar charge controller we've already got two 180 watt solar panels on the roof of the van the cables are connected to that they then plug into this and this converts the the voltage that is not usable coming from the solar solar panels into usable voltage so it, it steps it down into 12 volts to actually charge up the battery so essentially that is just the brains behind the solar panels charging the leisure battery this one beneath here is the orion this is a dc to dc charger so this similar to that takes the input cable from the vehicle battery so when we're driving along the excess power that comes from the vehicle alternator will plug into here and then it will then charge our leisure battery so that is connected there's a cable which i put in in fact you can see it here it's a cable that pops up from underneath the van and that goes right back to the engine bay where it will be connected onto 
this Orion and um, yeah, charge up the battery when we're driving along. So we've got two forms of charging there. We've got the solar charger and we've got the vehicle battery charger. So pretty covered nicely for off-grid there. Right, let's have a look at this big box here. This is the Easy Plus Compact. So this does all sorts of different things. It's quite cool, actually. So we've got a plug on the side of the van, which when we're plugged into mains hookup or shore power, as they like to call it in the States, it then comes into the bottom here through this consumer unit, which has sort of MCBs and RCDs, and then onto our sockets in the van. So we can plug into an electrical hookup on a campsite and the sockets in our van will be powered through this. Secondly, this also has an inverter built into it. This is also going to be connected to our leisure battery, which means if we are not plugged in on a mains hookup, there isn't one available, or if the power goes for whatever reason, we will be able to power stuff through those same sockets, sort of things like charging laptops, that kind of stuff, we will be able to plug in through those same sockets and not have to worry about having separate sockets for stuff that is off-grid and stuff that is when we're plugged into um, hookup. The also good thing about this is it's, ha it's like an uninterrupted power supply almost. You know, if, you, if you're plugged into the mains and you have your TV on inside or you're charging your laptop and if the mains trips out, this automatically switches over to the inverter without you even knowing. So really clever bit of kit. The other thing that this does, this is also when we're plugged into the mains uh, hookup, this will also charge our leisure batteries through this system as well. So basically it's a lot of different things all in one neat neat box. It's, it's quite heavy but it, these would be three separate items otherwise. You would have a battery charger for your mains plug to charge up your leisure battery, you'd have a consumer unit and you'd also have an inverter um, separate to all this so this is basically an all-in-one package quite a beasty bit of kit I have noticed that this blue is different to this blue what's that all about so there's a rundown of the main devices that are going to be mounted onto our electrical wall there's a couple of things missing one being the the big battery and we've actually gone for I think it was three was it 320 amp hour battery so it's it's a pretty decent sized battery um, it's lithium as well, so that means you can use much more of the actual battery capacity. But we'll talk about that when the actual battery arrives. There'll also be a 12 volt fuse box. So basically everything, things like um, the diesel heater, the fridge, the lights in the van, they will all feed back to a relatively small fuse box, but I've not bought that yet. I need to get hold of one of them. Um, and then lots of other like fuses and isolators and that kind of stuff. I almost forgot the main switch. So this is the isolator. Um, so it'll basically isolate when the batteries are plugged into all this kit. This will switch off that so you can actually work on it. But what I'm thinking is once I've worked out where everything needs to go, I'm thinking of cutting um, sort of oval holes or just normal holes into this board and then feeding the cables from the back into this, just so it looks a little bit neater. I won't be able to do that with absolutely everything because um, some stuff will actually be sort of surface mounted just because it's going to be easier to to get to. I, I don't think I'll be able to get absolutely everything behind this board. I think it'd be a bit too much. But I'm going to roughly get work out where everything needs to go. And what I'd also like to do, if it's possible, if I can make it all work, is this side of the wheel arch. I'm thinking I might try and fit the, a gas locker um, so I might try and leave space for a small gas locker. That's for our cooking. Um, just because we've not got a huge amount of space. Well, we have got space, but the kitchen's going to be in front of the wheel arch. So I'd quite like it to be this side of the wheel arch, preferably. But I'll work out roughly if there's going to be, if there's going to be too much weight and that kind of stuff, then maybe it won't work, but we shall see. So I'm going to use this schematic and try and work out where everything needs to go. Well, it's not the easiest thing to try and work out exactly where you want everything. I've actually um, started thinking maybe I want this to be further over the wheel arch just because a lot of this stuff, once it's in and set up, you shouldn't ever have to touch it. So I'm thinking, surely it'd be better to have that right up at the front of the van, like in a in the more inaccessible place than 
than things like this, maybe a bit further back where I might need to switch these back on. But yeah, I, it's not the easiest. I've, I also forgot to mention this. We've also got a smart shunt that connects onto this bus bar setup and then back to the battery. And what it what it does in a nutshell is um, it works out how much power is. Oh, look at that. all of a sudden become like David Attenborough look gone um, yeah uh, it basically works out how much power is coming out of the battery and how much power is coming back again and therefore knows how much energy you are using in that specific time so it's just part of the monitoring system that will then talk to the Serbo GX which will then be displayed on our touch screen I'm also wondering whether I should have the actual main switch that can be mounted straight onto the bus bar there, but I'm wondering whether that should be a bit more accessible. That's a bit tricky. Obviously I need to account for wherever the battery is gonna go as well, but I think that will be mounted here. Um, yeah. And then I can probably put the gas locker right at the back maybe. Decisions, decisions. I think I basically just need to go for it, Just pick somewhere and then just work out afterwards that I've done it wrong. Right, well I've actually committed, <laughs> finally. It's taken me ages. I've had lunch and all sorts, been dithering. Anyway, I've also bought uh, an enclosure which will hold an isolator so that I can isolate the solar input. So the cables will come in the top, out the bottom and into the solar charge controller. But as you can see, what I've done is I've put a couple of holes in and then I'm going to use a jigsaw to sort of join those holes up so we've got some ovals. Um, but I need to flip the board over because my jigsaw uh, blade the would just tear it apart and rip all this up. A bit like, annoyingly, that's the only bit that did, but for some reason that got caught with the hole saw and it just took a bit off. So. That's a bit of a shame, but I'll just paint it black and I'm sure you won't see it. But yes, yeah, so I've done them underneath all of these, so I'm hoping that I can get the majority of the cables sort of hidden behind this actual panel. Some of them will have to be on the surface, like the ones from the battery, I'm going to just come down straight to the battery because I don't really know exactly where that's going to be because I'm not sure how big that is yet. Also, anything for the Serbo GX I've left on the surface because I don't know how big the connectors are and things like that. It's like some of them are got all these. There's like HDMI, USB. So yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I think most of that will be surface mounted. I might even get some like black trunking or something so that I can run it nicely hidden. But I'm gonna take all this stuff off and flip the board over and use the jigsaw to turn these holes into ovals. Harvey does not like having sun cream put on. What you got there? You got a biscuit? <laughs> Have you got a biscuit? It's not the end of the world, is it? Oh, See? Dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Right, well they're not bad, um, yeah they don't look too bad, they look a bit skew with. It's quite hard to do with a jigsaw but... Hello Daddy. Hello Harvey! Oh, but yeah, they, you know, they'll do the trick, that's the main thing. So the light has changed rather dramatically because I've been doing lots and lots of work. It's been a bit of a pain sort of getting this in and out and making sure it's 
all correct but I've got some of the cables through those holes I'm actually just going to mount these I've got a clamp holding it in place I don't need it I don't want it screwed right back just yet because I need to feed more cables behind but I want to get the devices in place really on the board just so I know exactly where everything is going and I can follow that schematic uh, going from device to device so yeah I'm gonna get some of these screwed to the wall I've got to show you this I've got to change these cables here these are 35 mil cables I need to change them to 70 mil cables <laughs> this is the most intimidating thing ever I just took this cover off to do that oh my gosh yeah that's pretty terrifying anyway I need to take that fuse out and then take those um, lugs undo those lugs and drop the cables out the bottom I'm also going to have a quick look to see how this is mounted to the wall um, I think it's just hooked on at the top actually I just flipped it over and it has a, a separate mount so you actually attach that to the wall which is quite handy and then it just hooks on top of that but yeah that's pretty handy because it's a heavy thing to lift and try and mount yourself Well, there we have it that is the blue stuff mounted anyway god it looks so cool well i'll tell you what it is far more exciting doing things like this than insulation and battening and scribing i'm so rubbish at scribing there is still so much left to do but i'm going to call it a day for now it's been a really long day for me um, it doesn't look like I've done much, but it, it has been a lot of getting in and out of the van with this big board. Uh, and obviously now I've got the bed frame in, it makes it a bit trickier to do all these jobs. It would have been so much more difficult without the schematic from Roma. Please make sure you subscribe. There is loads more left to do, obviously on this van, but also on this electrical system. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be doing all the wiring, setting all the, all the um, system up as well. Please stay tuned for that. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking. And uh, yeah, we, it really helps us out if you subscribe. So please, please do consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.